Hello, I'm Carol Gregory and I represent the 30th Legislative District. As you know, I was appointed by the governor to fill the vacancy that was created when Representative Roger Freeman died so tragically and so young last fall. Since I'm new, I thought I'd begin by talking about the process that I'm learning as we go, and one that I think is helpful in understanding how bills move through the legislature. We have just reached a milestone in the legislature, in that we have passed the deadline for policy committees in the House and Senate to approve bills that have been introduced in their res respective chamber. I serve on the House Education Committee, the Higher Education Committee, and the State Government Committee, and we heard bills for the last month on suggested changes and improvements for those three areas. To give you some context, we have heard a total of about 2,200 bills in both chambers, which makes for a very rigorous experience, but one that was very rewarding and very exciting. This week, we are on the floor voting on bills that have come out of policy committees and are still alive in the House. And the Senate is doing the same thing on their side. These have also gone through two other rigorous examinations prior to getting to the House. One is the Appropriations Committee where it is decided whether we can afford the idea. The other is the Rules Committee where there is a further selection of which bills will be presented to the full House for a vote. I want to speak today about two issues that are moving through the legislature. Out of the Education Committee has come House Bill 1785. This bill delinks high stakes testing from high school graduation. As it currently stands, our students have to pass the high stakes test in order to graduate. This bill, which I supported, would say that coursework is required for graduation and that the purpose of testing is assessment. We will assess students in the 11th grade to make sure that they are ready to graduate and that they do not have any deficiencies in their knowledge. We will then use the 12th grade to prepare students for the transition from high school to higher education. That will give a student with deficiencies time to catch up and be ready to leave high school and take on the next challenge. I believe this is a stronger process for preparing our students for some type of higher education and I have supported this legislation. The second thing I want to talk about is higher education. You're currently looking at a graph that shows higher education funding at the state level over the past 25 years. This is dramatic information showing that the state has reduced its support of higher education so significantly that today it's very difficult for many of our students to even consider the opportunity. What I showed you is for four-year institutions. The pattern is the same for community colleges, but not quite so drastic. In effect, there are two funding sources for higher education. One is state money, the second is student tuition. What has happened in Washington State is that the state portion has been reduced to about 38%, just a little over one-third, which means that the other two-thirds are made up of student tuition. This is really concerning to me. As I talked recently to some fourth graders from Twin Lakes Elementary who were visiting the Capitol, I asked them how many intended to go to college. Virtually every hand in the room went up. I was excited about that because the goal of K-12 is to prepare students for further learning. But then I thought about what that meant for their futures. We don't have the room right now in higher education and parents can't afford the cost because it has gotten out of control. For me, this is one of the most critical issues for this legislative session, to begin to address the balance between tuition and the state's responsibility for higher education. I will keep you posted on this and other issues as we go along. If you have anything you'd like to discuss with me, please don't hesitate to get in touch. Call, write, or send me an email. I really appreciate hearing from you. That's how I learn and am able to make decisions about what you, my friends and neighbors in the 30th district believe are the right answers. Thank you.